Mambo Jabo again, story time again with your true storyteller, Stanley Karevi. Viewers, thank you for watching. Thank you for keeping tuned to my channel. The topic of today is not a popular topic. By the way, it's a taboo to talk about this topic. In the African setup, we do not talk about death, but I have decided to talk about death because it is inevitable. Because what I have learned is that unlike money, you can always tell how much money you have, but you can never tell how much time you have to live. And it's good to talk about it and be prepared because nobody, there's nobody that is going to live like a stone. We are all going to die at one point. And Mr. Death, we do not love you. We do not like you. We hate you, Death. We hate you. You snatch the loved ones from us. You destroy families. You make us cry. You are cruel. You deny us the right to keep living and to enjoy the gifts that come with life. You destroy what people have created, what people have built over the years. We hate you, Mr. Death. And you are a loser, you are a liar, you are not going to win. Because we believe there is life after death. That this is not the end of our living. We hate you. We really hate you. It's a taboo to talk about it in Africa. Because there is a lot of stigma in death. And that is why most of us, we do not write down our wills. There is a belief that if you write down a will, it's like you are calling for your death. So people do not do that. And by not writing your will, that causes a lot of problems in your absence. When you become past tense, and you are not there to make decisions, a lot of things go wrong because you refused to write your will. One day, I was young and we were in primary school. We were in the same school with my three sisters and one of the neighbor's kids who was also a classmate the uncle passed on and he was a popular person in the village. He was a doctor. We didn't have many doctors. He was the only doctor that I knew when I was growing up. And when he died, the whole community around my village was mourning. So this morning we are all in school and we are called to the assembly point. The bell was rung and everybody, like a thousand students congregated at this place and the principal announced that because of the death of this father to one of our schoolmates, the school will be closed in the afternoon and all of us were supposed to head for the funeral. He must have been a very important person for the whole school to close and go for this funeral. So we were, went there. We were happy. But we were afraid because it was a funeral. Somebody had died. Somebody was going to be buried, never to come up again. But it was a day, it was like an outing because in a funeral there is a lot of eating, there is a lot of tea, there is 
water, a lot of food is cooked for the mourners. And as kids, you know, where there is food, there is happiness. So we looked up to that. And all together, about 12 o'clock, the schools were closed. And we went to this place. And there is a sermon before somebody is laid to rest. So we are all waiting there. We are not thinking even about the guy that died. We are all thinking about when are we going to eat. Because the smell of food was everywhere in the air. And when it was time for this body to be taken down the grave. You know they use the ropes. There is two ropes. One on each side of the coffin. Some men will hold the two ropes and you just put down the coffin all the way to the bottom of the grave. As that was happening, everybody is surrounding, singing funeral songs. And as the coffin was going down, some of the men, they released, they let go the ropes faster than the other people. And this made the coffin go like this. And it went all the way down. It hit the base of the grave. And the guy, the doctor who was inside there, because he was moved forward and he hit that coffin door. Because it comes with a door. Because normally even before somebody is laid down, they open the top, there is a top area which is open for people to view the body. Then it is closed, but it is only closed with just a few nails because nobody is going to open it. So this time, accidentally, when he came down, this guy just hit that opening and the door just flipped open and he stood in the coffin inside the grave. The door was open and this guy is standing right there. Believe it or not, not even the pastor or the brothers or the wife or the kids of this dead guy stood the grounds. Everybody for himself. It was everybody for himself. It was helter-skelter, just trying, trying to run for your lives. People were running into the cornfield, others were going up the mountain, everybody was running. People ran as far as, because this guy has risen from the dead. People were crying he was dead. The next minute he is alive and looking at you smiling because he had cotton in his mouth. He is looking at you, it's like he is smiling. I tell you, we ran so far away. and. All directions. It took the effort, the courage of like three gentlemen. They also had ran away, but after some time, after an hour, they went back slowly towards the grave and they looked from a distance and they said, I think he is dead. I think it was an accident. I don't think he is. He is smiling. And eventually, they went up to this guy. They put him back in the coffin. They struggled, three gentlemen. They struggled. They put him back in the perfect position. And they covered the whole just remain. It took them a lot of energy, a lot of power, a lot of sacrifice. They were tired, but they were determined to do it. Even the relatives of that guy, people didn't come to that homestead until the following day because they were scared. I got home, my sisters got home hours later because they had gone in different directions. Everybody was on his own. We were trying to run away from somebody who had resurrected. 
I don't know what happens. We cry for our loved ones when they die. But at the same time, you don't want them to wake up again because that is what happened. This guy resurrected from the dead and everybody took off, including the pastor himself. That happened when I was about 10, 11 years old. I will never forget. Just the other day, a few months ago, my brother called my mother and he said to my mom, Mom, do you know that your neighbor Karaja's mother is dead. My mom said, no. How did you know? Yeah, because Karanja, my friend called me and he said his mother had died this morning. So my mom was surprised. He, she could not believe it. This is a woman that they talk to. She talks to her every day. And now she was gone. She, was, she abandoned everything she was going to, had planned to do that morning. And she walked straight to our neighbor to know what had caused her friend's death. She opened the door and she turned to close the door and she locked the door and as she turned again to keep going towards the homestead of our neighbor who was supposed to be dead. The woman was right there. Karaja's mom was right there holding her waist and she said to mommy, Regina, Mama Ken, how are you this morning? My mom almost collapsed. She wished that the earth would just open for her to get sucked in and disappear. She was going to ask what caused the death of this woman? And she was right there, talking to her. She could not believe it. I'm still surprised that she was able to respond and say, oh, she pretended she had gone there for something else. She said, oh, I wanted to ask whether you have that uh, fertilizer that you are using for your potatoes and the name you used so that we can buy that one. She came up with a story, but this woman was right there. She was just wishing how she could disappear. So she was asked, oh, can you sit down and have a, have a cup of tea? She said, no, 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 I just had mine. Uh, now I know the name of that. I want to set somebody. And she left that home quickly. She came home. She called my brother and said, who told you that Mama Karanja was dead? I was there. I went there right away and I met her. She was there talking to me. I, I almost, you almost killed me. This is the kind of stigma that lives with us. We like, we love our friends, our family members, our colleagues. But when somebody dies, it's a different story. It's really a different story. It's a mystery. And until this mystery is solved, this is going to continue. Viewers, thank you for watching. I'm liking your comments, your feedbacks. I hope we can keep tuned to this channel so that we can keep this going and have more fun together. Thank you. So. What had happened is that Karanja, when he called my brother Ken, he meant his mother-in-law. But during that call, he never said, my mother-in-law. He said, my mother is dead. And that is where the confusion came in.